the differences between you know, doing it yourself and doing it in a, in a hosted or a cloud model in terms of the data center, I think the physical data center might not be all that different technically other than maybe the scale. The scale of a cloud data center is going to tend to be a larger scale. Uh, the people that are doing cloud today are, are people that are already at scale. People like uh, Amazon and Rackspace and Google and Microsoft, those are all people that build data centers in you know 100,000 square foot chunks instead of you know the, these little tiny data centers. So that might be different. Um, I think the servers that we're using in the cloud might look a little different than traditional servers. Uh, one of the things about a cloud is that you can use, in some clouds, you can use commodity servers versus sort of the enterprise class machines. You can take a lot of servers and scale the applications across a, a lot of smaller servers and then therefore you don't have to put as much money or infrastructure into building redundancy at the server level. So we don't necessarily have to have redundant power supplies in the servers. We don't have to have necessarily uh, redundant fans. If a server fails, the cloud is much more resilient to adapt to that failure than a traditional application on a dedicated server might be. I think also just generally the way you build a data center uh, traditionally with you know, do-it-yourself, you usually build it a server at a time. It, once you build a facility, you know, you add a rack, you start filling that rack up with servers, you move on to the next rack. You don't build out the whole facility sort of on day one. With the cloud, you have a better idea of what that data center is going to look like over the long term. So you can lay out the data center in a more predictable manner. You can bring in servers a rack or a row at a time. Uh, even some companies now are starting to evaluate container-based data centers where they bring the data center in inside of a shipping container like you might see uh, on a big shipping, you know, at the docks or whatever, those big metal containers. Those containers are now becoming a way to build a data center in a very modular fashion. And most traditional IT departments don't use that kind of technology or don't think about it at that scale. Well, I think in terms of what makes a cloud, uh, you certainly have to have a data center and, and networking and uh, equipment like servers. Uh, so that's all the same. Where I think a cloud is very different than traditional hosting or traditional IT infrastructure is in the software. The software is the secret sauce. It's the magic. The software that uh, we use in our cloud is a combination of open source technology that we've, you know, that's available to anybody. Things like uh, Zen virtualization, the Zen hypervisor, that's part of our cloud, Linux operating system, uh, the sort of the standard databases and, and stacks of, of software. But then there's custom software that's used to glue it all together. The provisioning systems, the billing systems, the monitoring, the, um, the technologies to, to make the cloud a cloud is what's different. And we had to develop all of that really in-house. It's not available or it doesn't tend to be available as a, as a commercial off-the-shelf package software. I think VMware is trying to change that and starting to put together some offerings for, for corporate environments that want to look like a cloud. But but um, you know, a real cloud is a multi-tenant environment, which means multiple customers sharing the same servers, the same hardware potentially. And in that regard, you have to build the software in a way to help isolate those customers, segregate, meter the billing for those people, understand how much they're using, how many resources are allocated to each customer, and then track all of that stuff and then send them a bill at the end of the month. So those are, those are some of the things that make a cloud a cloud. Number one <laughs> challenge anybody would have w would be funding the, the effort. I mean, it's it's not something that uh, you can do on a small budget. It takes a lot of money to invest in the people to build the, co the software. It takes a lot of money in, in terms of the data centers. Um, the scale I mentioned uh, that uh, we, we operate at is very large. And um, then, you know, bringing servers into the cloud or adding servers at, at that scale uh, is very costly. So that's a big one. The changes that are required in an organization to move from a traditional IT environment into cloud requires a shift from sort of systems engineering and hardware focus to more of a software development and uh, software engineering focus. So that's been a big shift for us too. As a company, uh, we've had to really change who we are in a way from network guys and server guys to software guys. Uh, so any, anybody that's going to become a cloud and try to offer it as a service is going to end up becoming a software company you know, in a way. You know, last, I think another big challenge is just the, the risk involved in operating a cloud. So 
sort of concentrates everything, focuses everything on that one that one cloud. If, if you have an outage on an individual server, many times nobody notices. The only person that notices are the people that use that, that application, but it doesn't end up in the newspaper on Monday morning. If your cloud has a problem, you will end up on the newspaper as a big you know, case study for what not to do with you know, IT infrastructure. And so I think the just sort of the level of visibility, the level of risk involved in operating the cloud is a lot higher and, and a lot more um, concentrated. So it, it takes a lot more rigorous policy and procedure and understanding of how applications operate at scale. And um, it's probably new to most people. This is not something that, that everyone has experience with. So it's probably difficult to, to, to just overnight flip the switch and become a cloud.